conversation. Okay. Um, hi, um, Evan. I'm the associate director of Truth Wins Out, and I'm sitting here with a face that you all probably recognize, Mr. Dan Savage. Um, and we're sitting in the <laughs> fly. Yeah. Flies now. <laughs> um, we're sitting in the lovely Rizzo's Diner in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, and um, Dan was nice enough to come and uh, sit down and ask, answer a couple of my questions and say hi to all you guys. So um, anyway, Dan, I wanted to talk to you real fast. You know the work that we do with Truth Comes Out, mm -hmm. and I, uh, where we are kind of in the movement right now is we've got you know 54 percent of the country supports marriage equality according to a lot of the polls, and um, you know senators are kind of falling all over themselves to 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 endorse it, but at the same time, you know, we still have the situation where you've got gay kids who, you know, might live in a house filled with religious fundamentalists or something like that, where they're not experiencing this openness that a lot of the country is. But they're hearing the news, you know. Yeah. Um, it used to be, we talked to gay guys in the 70s, 80s, often what you hear about their experience of being with children yeah. when they were young gay kids was they thought they were the only one in the world. Yeah. The only boy on earth who felt this way about other boys. Nobody grows up anymore believing that, unless they're being raised in a basement on a Mormon compound in Utah somewhere. No queer kid grows up thinking they're the only boy on earth who feels this way about other boys, or the only girl on earth who feels this way about other girls. And so even kids who are in bad circumstances, the news is reaching them. You know, think back to Harvey Milk's You Gotta Give a Pump speech, exactly. where he said there's some kid in New Mexico or somewhere who realizes he's gay and figures he has two options. One is a life in the closet or suicide, and he opens a newspaper and he reads about this guy getting a gay guy getting elected to the city council in San Francisco, and he's got another option now, move to San Francisco. Right. Um, and so there are kids out there who are in bad places in bad circumstances, uh, but they realize, I think, more and more that they have options. That, yeah, that is really good. And um, you know, we had somebody that I wrote about yesterday who was actually a pastor uh, who was a church not far from here, and uh, you know, he, he, he preached this really awful, really not inclusive message, <laughs> uh, basically telling the parents, you know, Oh, well, don't reject your kids because you can't save them um, if you uh, keep them out of the house. And, um, and I thought it was kind of funny because I posted it. And um, immediately another pastor of the same denomination on my Facebook page was providing a counterpoint to this and going, well, you can come to my church, you know? And so, I mean, we, that, we had definitely averaged that. Point. Yeah, the wedge is going in the other way now. It yeah, is. You know, the gay issue used to be a wedge for Republicans who are in the Democratic Party. Uh, it's a divide Democratic voters from the Democratic Candidates. Yeah. Now it's alleged it's divided the GOP. It's divided the GOP. So the anti-gay ravings of anti-queer ravings of uh, mainstream churches used to really divide families. And increasingly, it's now dividing those churches. Yeah. More and more people are leaving their churches and walking away uh, from faith altogether because they don't because because Tony Perkins and Brian Brown and Peggy Gallagher and the previous vote they succeeded in making Christian faith synonymous with anti-gay bigotry, and, and you put that in front of people, like you can be a Christian and a bigot, or you cannot be a Christian, a lot of them choose not to be a Christian, particularly if they know gay people or have gay relatives. Not among their kids, anyway. Right. Yeah, the, the, uh, but it shouldn't have to be that way, I'm not advocating that we being that way. It's not our fault that Christianity is synonymous with anti-gay bigotry. Exactly. It's Tony Perkins' fault, it's Megan Gallagher's fault, it's Jerry Falwell's fault, it's Pat Robinson's fault, it's yeah. Pope's fault, previous Pope, and one before that, we'll see how the new one shakes out. It's their fault. But they have tarnished the Christian brand, yeah. and it's costing them adherence, it's costing them members, and destroying Christian denominations. It the is. wedge is going the other way now. You know, they used to anti-gay bigotry to pour out of churches, and yeah. gay kids would be destroyed. Anti-gay bigotry pours out of churches. Gay kids are still destroyed by that, but now churches are being destroyed by that too. What do you think about um, the fact that you know things like ex-gay repair therapy still exist? I mean, you know, that's kind of what we started. Uh, you know, right. that with truth comes out, and of course we're expanding now because luckily they're kind of being vanquished one by one. But there's it still exists, and there's still parents that are doing that. You're a parent. It, yeah. it may still exist. It may always exist. Yeah. In the same way that uh, fake abortion clinics that provide no abortion care services yeah. uh, exist and will always exist because there's a lot of people who are effing crazy and they have a lot invested in the lie that yeah. sexual orientation is a choice, and they will fund these organizations. Uh, Garth and other bullshit organizations <laughs> um, that prove that. And there's a lot of desperate, idiotic parents. Yeah. Uh, that congressman in Utah was forcing his gay son into a parent there. Exactly. Um, a lot of desperate parents who are invested in this, it's a choice thing in the parent of therapy. They're going to force their kids into it. Uh, well, 
Well, I've gotten kind of letters from kids who met their boyfriends at reparative therapy camps. Yeah, we. You may throw your kid into reparative therapy, and uh, you may get a lot of dick out of that. No, they, they might. Well, I have one more. <laughs> speaking, speaking of a lot of dick and tough to dick, um, I have one more question for you. Um, uh, we watched Drag Race last night. Yep. We were a judge. Uh, last year, um, you said, do you care to pontificate on what's going to happen this time? Uh, I think Jinx Monsoon is going to win. She's a Seattle right. girl. Um, I think you're right. Such a talent, and not just a talent for drag, but a performer, singer. I've seen him uh, in shows in Seattle uh, where he also played men, and he's uh, effing terrific. With yeah, much talent. he's really, he's, he's, he's impressive. And I love impressive. that show. You know, there's not a lot of representation on TV of... Uh, working class, gay men, and poor gay men, and gay men of color, and gay men who are immigrants, uh, non-native English speakers, you know, it's all Cam and Mitch, and sort of upper middle class right. um, gay men, even when they're of color, they're kind of usually upper middle class. Yeah. Uh, but to see, you know, what I think is so great about Drag Race, beyond just the performances and the picture, you know, how funny it is, it's just that seeing that representation on television, that gay men aren't all of one socioeconomic class. It, it really it cuts across all the classes, yeah. and race, and all of that. So yeah, and I think that's hugely important. I think there's a political thing going on with that show yeah. that the producers weren't even aware they were doing, yeah. but it does. Well, on that note, we will sash it. I mean, where else would you meet Latrice yeah. Royale? Right? I know, right? Oh my god. But that sorry. show, where else would you meet? Such a wonderful gay guy, friend of prison, who became such a Big, such a role model for yeah, so many people. Guy of size, black, yeah. funny, but been the prison cooler, smart, and showed them that they could have this amazing attitude and, right. and really triumph. And you couldn't create a Latrice Royale no. uh, in, a, in a non-fiction character. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, thank you, Dan. Um, again, this is Evan, associate director of Three Points Out, signing off.